Namaste everyone. Welcome back children. Children as we are talking about animals and their young ones and uh, we are very well aware of the two methods of reproduction now by laying eggs or by giving birth to young ones and you know for last two videos we have been talking about animals that lay eggs. Now in this video we will shift our focus to the animals that give birth to the young ones and those animals are also called mammals. So let us take up our today's topic that is mammals. Children, let us quickly recall the term reproduction. We know that living things produce young ones of their own kind and this process is called reproduction. And there are two ways of reproduction. First is by laying eggs and animals like birds, lizards, snakes, crocodiles, fish, insects, etc. They lay eggs and then we have animals that give birth to the young ones and they are the cow, sheep, deer, cat, etc. So we know the two categories of animals. First animals that lay eggs and another one is animals that give birth to babies. And in our previous two videos we have talked about animals that lay eggs. And now in this video we will talk about animals that give birth to babies. So let us first of all understand the term mammals. So what are mammals? Animals that give birth to young ones and suckle them with milk are called mammals. That means animals which give birth to the young ones and then they feed their young ones on their milk are called mammals. So let us take up the examples of mammals. So what all animals fall in the category of mammals? So we have human beings, cows, dogs, sheep, cat, deer, kangaroo, lion, tiger, etc. And you know in mammals, young ones develop inside the mother's body. Whereas in case of egg-laying animals, the young one develops outside the mother's body because the mother lays eggs and then the babies hatch. But in case of mammals, the young ones, they develop inside the mother's body. And after they are born, mother feed them with her milk. They have well-developed brain and they breathe through lungs. So you should know that mammals have very well developed brain and they breathe through lungs and most of them live on land and have hair on their body. But you know there are some mammals which live in water also. These are called aquatic mammals. As I told you aqua means water. So mammals that live in water are called aquatic mammals. So let us see what are the examples of aquatic mammals. They are dolphins and whales. Yes, they live in water but they give birth to babies. They do not have hair on their body. They also breathe through their lungs and come out of water surface to breathe. And then we have one more animal which falls in the category of mammals and that is a bat. Bats are also mammals even though they can fly in the air like birds. So we have aquatic mammals and then we have mammals that can fly also. So certain animals like duck-billed platypus, spiny anteater, they lay eggs. But still we keep them in the category of mammals. Why? Because they suckle their young ones. They have hair on their bodies and they breathe through lungs. That means even if they lay eggs, they are kept in mammals category because of the other features which mammals have. So children, with this let us understand how do mammals care for their young ones. Mammals care for their young ones for a long time. That means as compared to other animals, mammals they have to nurture their babies for a long time until they grow big and start finding their own food. So they keep their babies clean and warm, they feed their babies and they protect their babies from enemies. So before closing down to today's session, let us talk about some 
more terms related to mammals. Most mammals are called viviparous animals because the embryo develops inside the mother's body. So here we have new term viviparous. The term is applied to those animals wherein the child develops inside the mother's body. So viviparous is opposite to the oviparous wherein the embryo develops inside an egg laid by the animal. That means when the animal lays eggs as we have seen in egg laying animals. So those animals which lay eggs and the young one develops outside the mother's body and we call that oviparous animals. And let us take up a very interesting fact about the tilapia fish. This fish carries its egg, eggs in its mouth until they hatch. So, once the eggs hatch, they release the eggs in the water. Moreover, how do they protect their young ones? The small fish hide in the parent's mouth when faced with danger. So, that is about amazing nature, no? So, different mam mammals, they take care of their young ones in a different way. So, let us take up the questions now. What are mammals? List their features and how do mammals care for their young ones? I hope after going through this video, you must have understood and you must be able to answer these two questions. But still, if you have any doubt, then you need to go to the slide number four to understand about the features of mammals and slide number seven to know how mammals take care of their young ones. So children that was all about mammals and this is how they take care of their young ones. They feed them, guard them and they train them to find their own food and this is how you are being taken care of by your parents right and you know this prolonged parental care will make you fit to survive in this environment. So that was all about today's session and with this thank you for listening, thank you for watching and take care of yourselves.